I'm Jesus, and in this video, we're going to look at the story of CSGO Wild, the biggest scam in the history of CSGO. Now, before we get into the story itself, there's something I want to say. So, when you run a business, you can generally get an edge on your competition by doing stuff unethically. You can make a bit more money, invest it a bit more in growing your market share, and the further you push it, the more of an edge you get, right up until the point where you get caught. And this is something that's good to keep in mind when we look at the story of CSGO Wild. Now, I, I say it's the biggest fraud in CSGO history, but that is actually quite hard to quantify, and there has been a few massive frauds, but this is definitely one of the biggest, and Unlike a lot of these other scams, this one involves the biggest esports organization in the world. And believe me, when you read these news articles about FaZe accidentally admitting to owning this website, you're only hearing half the story, the better half of the story. In fact, the other half is such a disgrace that it's gonna make FaZe look kind of good. And this is a story I wanna tell in this video because all these years on, it still matters and it's going to keep on mattering to the future of CSGO. So, without any further delays, let's start this story at the beginning, with an esports organisation that just wanted to pay for a CSGO team. Small loan of a million dollars. So, in mid-2015, an esports organisation called FaZe was looking to expand its horizons. Initially, they'd started out as a Call of Duty organisation, but They'd expanded a lot since then. They were known for having a very strong emphasis on their social media presence that's always been a priority for their organisation, but buying a competitive CSGO team was also on the agenda. But the problem is, they didn't have the money. So to compensate for that, they decided to tap in to a lucrative and growing market, and that would be gambling sites that use CSGO skins. Now, these are just that, a gambling site using CSGO skins as a currency, and because CSGO skins can be converted straight into cash, for all events and purposes, these sites are the same as any other gambling site. Well, with, with one exception, they were operating in a completely unregulated, Wild West style environment where there was no rules and no oversight, and as a result, a lot of dodgy shit was going on behind the scenes. So naturally, the morally upstanding gentleman at FaZe turned to this industry in order to fund their CSGO team, and they launched a website called CSGO Wild in August 2015. Now, this was your standard gambling website, there was nothing that remarkable about it, and FaZe leveraged their standing on social media to launch an advertising blitz, an advertising blitz that brought huge amounts of traffic to the site. Although, there were some skeptics, so if we look at this video here by FaZe Adapt, well, if we go to the comments, there were some people suggesting that maybe his reactions weren't 100% legit. Now, I can't prove FaZe was rigging these advertisements, but what I can prove is that they weren't properly disclosing that these were ads. There's nothing in the description acknowledging that. And this was pretty much normal for how FaZe advertised this site. Dodgy roles and no disclosure it was an ad. And uh, did, I, did I mention that CSGO Wild allowed miners to gamble on it and it was also available in regions where online gambling is illegal? Yeah, it did both those things. Now, FaZe were not the only people doing this. They weren't even close to being the only people doing this. This was stock standard for skin gambling sites at the time. And like a lot of other skin gambling sites as well, FaZe didn't disclose their ownership. They completely denied it, even going so far as to harass people who alleged they owned it. Instead, they pretended that some guy called Gagey owned it, although occasionally they had trouble keeping the story straight. Occasionally they'd mix up Gagey's name with FaZe Reigns, yeah, I, I wonder what's going on there. Uh, unfortunately for FaZe though, when Phantom Lord, a disgraced gambling con man, had his Skype logs leaked, they revealed the truth very clearly. He points to the syndicate site that we now know very much about, CSGO Lotto, and he also says CSGO Wild by the FaZe guys. He says, I'm talking to both, looking into what they're doing, and if it's a threat or not. CSGO Wild by the FaZe guys. Well, fancy that. Now, the best thing about this log is that Phantom Lord states that he's talking to them. It's not, it's not hearsay, it's not something he's overheard, it's not a rumor. He is directly talking to the FaZe guys over CSGO Wild. 
This is what I call slam dunk evidence. Now, despite all this, FaZe continue to deny, and it looked like they were going to get away with it. The internet has a short memory, and it seemed like FaZe's ownership of this site was going to be largely forgotten. Or at least it was, right up until April 11, 2020, when FaZe Banks decided that what the world really needed to know is that FaZe funded its CSGO team by offering gambling services to kids. My motivation for doing it actually was at the time we weren't making enough money to buy a CSGO team. All in, the, uh, the venture was going to cost us like a million dollars and we definitely did not have anything close to that. So my brain, like I just, look, we got to finesse it, we got to figure out how to make the money to buy this team now because in the next six months year this shit's gonna this team's gonna be worth like four or five million dollars and we need we we're not gonna be able to get into this game which we which in our heads we need to get in this game so we create this website and um through our rake and all this shit um we were making like two hundred thousand dollars a day and we set it up in Antigua. <laughs> we set it up in Antigua. We, I had a house in Antigua for like where's that for like Antigua like in the Caribbean island, yeah <laughs> where it's it's an island. It's one of those like islands where they the best. It's an island in the Caribbean where um what? Ga where gambling <laughs> where running a gambling website is completely legal if you have the permits and stuff to do it. So we flew there. We flew there private. Sat down with the guy who runs the country. Basically paid him like a hundred thousand dollars and he gave us the license. And we had this whole estate. Yeah, we were out there and ran this website for a few months and then the, the whatever it was all regulated and shut down. Yeah. We were the only ones who were doing it legitimate. So we shut our shit down and there's still people who are doing it, making crazy money. Thanks for letting us know about the Antigua part there, Banks, and that's how we know your site was CSGO Wild, because CSGO Wild was based in Antigua. All I've been able to really find is right down at the bottom, uh, uh, where it talks about, uh, you know, use of our services is at your own risk, blah, 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 and then underneath, oh, well, just above that, actually, thought this was quite funny. Yeah, we don't do refunds. <laughs> don't do refunds. By playing on this website, you agree that you are always playing at your own risk. Meanwhile, we'll, we're, we're producing these very dubious videos of us doing fake reactions and constantly winning. It's your own risk. It's your own risk. It's not our risk. It's your own risk. Anyway, law and jurisdiction. These terms and conditions will be governed by and construed in accordance with the laws of the island of Antigua. And any Sorry? dispute... <laughs> yeah. Sorry? Yeah, listen. Yeah, so I think we can conclude it was their side. Now, I also have to take issue with this whole we were the only ones running it legitly thing. No, you weren't. You were letting kids gamble on your side. I don't care what the license you bribe the government Antigua to give you says, that's not legit. And FaZe knows that, too, which is why they immediately decided to try and change the story a little bit. Hey everybody, uh, sorry for the long thread. I think if I put it in a video, it would probably be easier for you guys to understand. Just got off a long call uh, with FaZe Rain, and I wanted to explain my side of things. Why I reported on what FaZe Banks said, because he came out publicly admitted to owning the website, said a lot of other things alongside that, so I hope you guys can understand why I would report that as truth. Because, you know, after four years, after all the surrounding rumors and suspicions, Banks comes out and admits that he owns the site, was running it, and a lot of other things. I've now talked to FaZe Rain, who refutes all of that, and pretty much says that Banks heavily misworded what he had said, and uh, doesn't know why he actually said that stuff. And the worst part about this is after talking to Rain, I uh, obviously sounding very sincere and I can't prove, I cannot fully prove what Banks said. But I hope you guys understand why if Banks out of nowhere said he owned and ran the site that I would report that. You know, that's that's what I would do. Now I've talked to Rain and he says none of that is true and that was misworded and I'm I'm choosing off what a gut uh, to to believe him. Well, look Jake, I'll, I'll put it this way. You were reporting on a detailed story recounting FaZe running a gambling site, told by one of the co-owners of FaZe, who was directly involved with running the gambling site, which lined up perfectly with all the publicly available information about that gambling site. And against that, we've got the word of FaZe Rain, who claims that Banks just misworded things somehow. Although, I do like how Rain says he's not sure why Banks would say any of this, <laughs> because I kind of agree with Rain. On, on that point. I'm not sure why banks will come out and say they funded their CSGO team with underage gambling either. It sounds really, really stupid to me, and now the story is all over the media. But it, it doesn't end here, because FaZe got their money. 
They, they got their CSGO team, they got a group of tier 1 players who played like a tier 2 team for a year until Carrigan came along, and that's where they exit this tale. Instead, we've got a new protagonist, and we're going to discuss his story in part 2. Now, once FaZe acquired their CSGO team, there was a real change in how CSGO Wild was run. The, the FaZe crew weren't really involved too much anymore, Gagey just outright disappears, this is his Steam profile today, by the way, definitely a real person, and instead, management of Wild fell to someone else, a character who I'm going to refer to as Dracula. Now, many of you know who I'm referring to here, uh, and probably see what my reference is, but I'm not going to use his real name, although it's easy to find, I'm just going to call him Dracula. Now, Dracula seems to have been involved with Cisco Wild from the very beginning. So, he owned a site called kickback.com, and Cisco Wild seemed to be using his website's bots. So, as you can see in this ad, uh, you can see it's using a kickback.com bot. But after FaZe got the CSGO team, he seems to have taken over entirely. I'm not sure whether the equity changed hands, but for all events and purposes, this was now Dracula's site and he started recruiting other YouTubers and streamers to advertise it. Now, uh, notably McSkillet started advertising for them, and so did Phantom Lord. And that may come as a shock to some of you, because Phantom Lord is famous for having his own site, CSGO Shuffle, and it might sound a bit odd that he was advertising for CSGO Wild, but I can actually explain what was happening here, or at least uh, I've got a very good theory on it. So, basically, Phantom Lord had two business partners in CSGO Shuffle, and they were meant to do a three-way split of the profits, but Phantom wanted to keep the money for himself, and he didn't pay his business partners what they were owed. He controlled the money, but he didn't pay them. He delayed, he made excuses, he didn't give these guys their fair share. And of course, his business partners weren't too happy about this. They started applying a lot of pressure on him, and it was at this point Phantom Lord switched to advertising for CSGO Wild. Now, I can't read Phantom Lord's mind here. I know for a fact that he wasn't paying his business partners properly, but I, I can't read his mind on why he switched. But I'm suspicious. It may have been to avoid having to pay what he owed to his business partners. Basically, because he was advertising for Wild rather than Shuffle, CSGO Shuffle's revenue went down, and therefore he didn't have to pay these guys as much revenue, and he's making this extra money on the side from advertising for CSGO Wild. So, it basically, it was motivated by pure greed. Uh, what, what a nice guy, ripping off his fans and his friends. Great bloke, great bloke. But anyway, CSGO Wild continued on until about mid-2016, when Valve was forced to send down cease and desist to all skins gambling websites following a number of high-profile scandals, one of those being Phantom Lord. And CSGO Wild initially was shut down. Shut down very quickly, actually. People didn't really have time to withdraw. They really had a very disrespectful farewell at the end. They kind of just took the money, shut up shop, didn't really give people a particularly long amount of time to withdraw their skins, and then linked to, uh, what was, what's the name of that site, Sam, where... I cry every time or something. I cry every time. That was it. Uh, um, you know, for, for people who may have lost some skins. So I thought that was a little bit disrespectful. Now, that shutdown lasted a whole three months before CSGO Wild, apparently under a new owner, attempted a comeback as a real money betting site licensed in Malta. A completely legit site, by the way. But it wasn't a financial success. It didn't last long. And seemingly, CSGO Wild was dead. And this brings us to the final act of our story. There is no keeping Dracula in his coffin, because in late 2017, he repurchased ownership of CSGO Wild. Now, that this is something there's very little evidence of left, and you're going to find out why soon. A lot of it has just been wiped, although you can see that the Twitter account was active in doing giveaways around that time, and Dracula relaunched the site and launched an advertising blitz involving a large number of YouTubers. Now, I don't know how successful this was, but I imagine it went pretty well. But very quickly, he ran into a problem. You see, there was a bug on CSGO Wild that allowed third parties to view the Steam IDs of Steam accounts involved with the website. And Monarch, the owner of CSGO Empire, got his people to have a look. And it turned out, 
th there was actually a ton of like level 2 bot accounts doing $100 coin flip bets against actual people using the site. And uh, by the way, these bots happened to have a win rate of about 80%. Or in other words, the entire site was rigged. Dracula has set up a bunch of bot accounts to bet against real bettors and set things up so the bots would win the majority of flips. The entire thing was a massive, massive scam. Now, as I said, a lot of the evidence from around this time has been purged. There's not much left I can show about it, but what Monarch exposed was an enormous case of fraud and a lot of people would have been scammed if he hadn't stepped in. Now, Dracula initially attempted a very, very innovative defense. He claimed he'd been hacked. Uh, and keep in mind, by the way, his site had only been running for a week or so at this point, and that the hackers, for some reason, decided they weren't going to steal any skins, they were just going to gamble in instead. Now, unsurprisingly, people didn't buy this excuse, and Cisco Wild died as a result. The YouTubers who'd been sponsored by it turned around and denounced the site, and Dracula fucked off back to the cave, and to the best of my knowledge, he's currently out of business. But there's a reason this story still matters. At the start of the video, I talked about how you can get an edge in business by breaking the rules. We've seen FaZe do that by running a gambling site to break into CSGO early. Now, in the grand scheme of things, that's probably not as bad as it sounds. A, a lot of people were running gambling sites back then, and FaZe used the money they had to get into CSGO. The money went back into the game, and then they got out. So, look, the, the cover-up is really the biggest part of the story here, but what Dracula did is far worse. He was wholesale scamming his customers to line his own pockets. That's a much bigger deal, and it only came unstuck because he got caught. And I draw attention to this because CSGO gambling has not died. It's actually growing again. Now, these days, many big sites are licensed, so they're blocking access in jurisdictions where online gambling is illegal, they're doing age verification checks, that's good, that's really good. It's a massive improvement over the old days. But if you're willing to break those rules, you can gain an edge in the gambling industry. Your business will be cheaper to run, it'll be more profitable, and you'll have an edge on the competition. Now, Dracula might be gone, but this industry is growing again. And I can assure you that there'll be plenty of other blood-sucking parasites coming to CSGO to set up dodgy gambling sites that break the rules to make a quick buck. And this, matters to the game, because some of these guys probably will get caught again, and if they do, Valve might be forced to remove the ability to trade CSGO skins once and for all. The, the trading feature is what these gambling sites use, remove it, they can't operate, but this feature is also integral to CSGO's monetization strategy, because it gives skins value, and that's the driving force behind why people open cases, which is the reason CSGO is profitable, and the reason why Valve is actively maintaining the game. CSGO will be crippled if Valve has to remove this feature. Now, gambling sites are not going away. They're not going away unless that trading feature goes away. No matter how much a lot of people wish they would, they're staying here. So we're stuck in a bind. The gambling sites aren't going anywhere unless the trading functionality goes, but the gambling sites could also kill that trading functionality. And the banality of don't gamble isn't going to solve shit here. We need regulation. We need the big players in the market to be regulated gambling sites. And that comes back to consumers and influencers because the Draculas are going to come back to CSGO. I guarantee you they're going to come back. They're going to set up their dodgy sites. But if people refuse to use them and influencers refuse to promote them, these guys won't stick around. Now, it can be hard to know if a site is fake, even for influencers. You can be advertising a site, they can be rigging it on the back end, and you can have no idea about that. They can hide it from you. But I think as a community, we've got a right to demand standards when it comes from gambling sites. We need to demand they show their license, we need to demand they show their following regulations, and we need to demand that they show their site is provably fair. Because it really, really matters to the future of this game. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please like, comment, subscribe, Otherwise, trust the numbers, not your guts. I'm Jesus. Thanks for watching. See ya.